it's time to put some flooring in here. It's a little bit of a wreck right now. It's been a work zone for a month and a half. I've got paint and I still have staples in the floor, but we're gonna get this cleaned up. Get all these staples pulled up. Get the rest of the debris off the floor. After I get all the staples pulled, we'll go ahead and vacuum it. Take some measurements, get the square footage of this camper. Go buy some foam underlayment. Get some flooring. So I've noticed we have three different types of staples in this camper. I'll show you which ones that I am removing and the ones that you want to leave alone. Now, if you wanted to, you could just knock them all down with the hammer. That really wouldn't be an issue with the type of flooring we're going to put on here, but I like to remove my staples. So I'll show you the three types we've got in here. Here's the small staple that was holding the carpet down. There are a lot more of these than anything else, but they're not too bad. These staples are best pulled with a set of vice grips or pliers. I like to use these because I can kind of roll the pliers out and it takes a little force to pull them out. Here's the second staple I was talking about. You can see it's a little wider on the top and it has a little bit of carpet padding underneath of it. That's an indicator that this was the staple holding down the carpet padding and it's not a structural staple. And I'll show you a quick tip that I learned from Travis Coyle on how to remove staples like this. I like to take the flat bar and kind of place it in the center of the staple and give it a good whack. Now this might make the camera shake, but if it works well, it'll come out in one whack. That little bit of splintering there, not an issue, and that doesn't always happen. This is the third staple I was talking about. You can see it's right next to a plywood splice, so it's nailed into the framing, and there's several of these along the splice. There's no carpet padding under it. You can see that the staple's buried a little bit further. Now, I'll go ahead and pull this out just so I can show you the difference in the staples. This is the one that was holding down the carpet. It's a much thinner gauge staple. They can break apart if they're even a little bit rusted. And this is the one that comes right out with a flat bar. By far the easiest and fastest to remove. And then this is the obvious difference. This one will go through the floor into the frame of the camper. Leave these in. After pulling a large section of staples out in the corner of a room, I like to go ahead, go back, and vacuum them all up. That way I'm not kneeling on pulled staples. Another reason why I like to get them vacuumed up and out of the way, if you're not already picking them up by hand, is you have a clear sight on which staples are still sticking up without all these loose staples everywhere blending in with the staples that haven't been pulled yet. Another problem you may run into while prepping the floor for your new flooring is screws that are sticking up. So it's a combination of screws and staples in this Jayco Eagle that is holding the subfloor down. So um, if the staples are sitting up a little high, I'll tap those down. But if it's a screw, you just come back with a screw gun and just snug those flush to the floor. So we're at this stage, and this is probably one of the most challenging parts about putting a floating floor in a camper that has slide outs. Here's the riding strip that the slide will come in. And it's a little ramp, it allows the floor to just get started on sliding in. And this was put in there all crooked and at an angle. It wasn't even sticking out the same. The reveal wasn't out the same along the length of this. So I've just taken it out. It's pretty beefy. I'm not sure that I even need to have that bevel on the right side. So I might throw this on the table saw and make it a little more low profile. That way I won't have to have such a large 
transition strip to cover this thing because most of this was exposed. This will be another figure it out project. Next step is to figure out the square footage. Now if you've never figured square footage before it's pretty easy but this camper is pretty cut up as you can see. Now it's really just length times width but we're going to do it in sections. So we're going to start with this first slide out here. Feet by 12 feet. This section here, I'm going to go ahead and figure the square footage as if this cabinet wasn't even in here. That's going to give me a little bit extra floor, and then if I do this enough times where I figure square footage when there's something in the way, that's going to give me extra, and then I won't have to include. 10% more square footage of waste material that I'd have to order. So we're going to call that six feet, and it's just under six feet. And this is just over two feet. It's two foot one inch, but I'm going to go ahead and call it two and a half feet. When you're figuring up your square footage, break it into sections that make sense to you. So that's what I'm doing. I'm just blocking it off in sections that make sense to me where I'm going to get the right measurement of floor. So for this section, I'm going to make a cube. I've already got the square footage for this bump out and this bump out. Now I'm going to do this section and I'm not going to worry about measuring that. I'm just going to make a rectangle measurement for in here. That's pretty much it. Just break it into sections that make sense for you. Length times width of that area that you've drawn up in your mind. And then once you get a list of all those sections, add them all up and that's your overall square footage of the camper so you can go order some flooring. Working into the bedroom now. It's really tight space in here. Lots of corners. Establishing a line to start from was kind of tricky. I was going to run it continuous into the bathroom, but that was going to be too difficult with the way the floor worked out. So I'm going to just bite the bullet and just put a transition strip hidden right underneath the door here. The floor is going to run underneath the bed just a few inches. You can see I've got a strip of wood I put in here. That's going to be a stopper. Um, the floor is going to not quite butt up against it. I'm going to leave 
about an eighth inch gap I'm using paint sticks just that I've cut into pieces to space my floor off of the wall and I'll do the same in here and that's just going to ensure that when I run the floor underneath the bed that when we're traveling it's not going to bounce around too much and the floor goes shifting under the bed or something ridiculous like that it might not happen but I'm going to go ahead and put these strips in place just to ensure that it doesn't happen here's a scrap piece of the transition strip that I made. I had to custom make it because of how wide it was. They didn't have anything in stock that would work. So it's just a piece of barn wood and I had to make it wide enough to, for that slide to cover a quarter inch onto the floor, both on the slide and in the main part of the room and wide enough to cover that riding strip that the slide comes in on, which it was wide. It was a lot wider than I had anticipated it being. Um, this is about three and an eighth inches wide but it looks great it's a little beefier than I would have liked but it's working really well and it matches the floor all right hey!